let's start now. So welcome to Hong Kong. Uh, so if you could climb to the Bruma Hill as I did last night, and if you stay up a little late, and uh, finally you will get, a, I think, a world-class view of the city. So the view is really fantastic. And uh, yeah, I think finally you will be falling in love with Hong Kong. Uh, now let's start this setting. Uh, the setting is deep dive into Windows DSi driver host process containers. To begin with, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm the Dodge Dev Lead at Microsoft AKS team, and uh, I'm the maintainer of a few Kubernetes projects, including Azure DSi drivers, uh, the upstream SMB and FS DSi drivers, which is now in the Kubernetes CSI org, and the local volume provisioner project, and also I'm the maintainer of the Windows CSF proxy project, which is now under migration uh, today. So in this session, I will provide you more details about this session and uh, uh, show you, more, uh, show you uh, more details about this. Yeah. And uh, this is today's agenda. So first, I will introduce the background of the Windows CSI proxy project, why it was needed in the first place. And then I will introduce the Windows host process container What's the benefits of the host process container? And why we want to migrate CSI Java on Windows from CSI proxy dependent to host process container deployment? And uh, how do we do the migration? And also I will show you the key learnings and gotchas we encountered during the migration process. And then we'll show you the migration progress of the cloud providers. And finally, I will conclude you with some future plans. So today, uh, the majority of the CSI Java on Windows rely on the CSI proxy process on the Windows node. Uh, because the CSI proxy can perform a uh, privileged storage operations on behalf of the CSI driver containers. And uh, from Kubernetes 1.23, Windows host process container was introduced. And this feature was stable on Kubernetes 1.26. And uh, the host process container can run directly on the host as a local process with privileges. So switching to host process container deployment will make Windows CSI Java development and uh, deployment easier. So uh, next I will show you the background of uh, why we, we uh, use the CSI proxy uh, in the beginning. Uh, prior to CSI Java, so all the store drivers in the, uh, in the Kubernetes main repository they are also called uh, in-tree drivers or built-in drivers. And uh, the Kubernetes, uh, a Kubernetes component that handles all the privileged storage operations for the in-tree storage drivers, both Linux nodes and Windows nodes. The operations could be like uh, disk format, mount and mount volumes. And starting from Kubernetes 1.13, 1 1.13, a uh, CSI driver interface was introduced. And then we started the journey to remove the entry drivers and then migrate to CSI drivers. This is a long journey. And uh, uh, the node plugin containers running inside of the CSI driver pods uh, requires elevated, elevated privileges to perform storage operations. While prior to Kubernetes 1.23, privileged pods are only supported on Linux nodes and it's not supported on Windows nodes. So that's the reason why we needed the CSI proxy in the beginning. So this diagram depends how the CSI driver interacts with Kubernetes on the Linux node. So in this diagram, they have Kubernetes, which is a, a Kubernetes component, and uh, we take Azure Disk CSI driver example, and uh, the CSI driver contains uh, mainly contains two containers. The node driver register is uh, responsible for registering the uh, registering with the Kubernetes, and then registering the CSI driver with the Kubernetes, and uh, the Azure Disk node plugin. Uh, which can run as a rigid pod inside of the CSI driver, which can perform some storage operations like uh, for mouse volumes in the node stage volume, uh, in the node stage volume CSI interface. This solution works perfect on the Linux node because on Linux node, a uh, privileged pod is supported. While the scenario is a little different on the Windows node. So this diagram depends how the CSI driver interacts with Kubernetes on Windows node. So besides the, besides the, uh, oh. 
So besides the C, uh, privilege components and the C schedule ports, we also have the USI proxy.exe process, which is running as a standalone process on the Windows node, which can have some privileges. So the CSI node plugin can only run as an unprivileged container inside of the C side driver, and it cannot perform some storage operations like uh, synchromatch, mount and mount volumes. Instead, it just issue other storage operations to the to the uh, CSI proxy, and the CSI proxy could handle those kind of operations on behalf of the CSI driver. So next, I will introduce the host process container. So starting from Kubernetes 1.23, uh, host process container feature was introduced, and uh, this feature was GA1 1.26. And for the host process container on Windows, it can run directly on the host, just as a regular process with privileges. And it has some benefits against the CSI proxy uh, for the CSI driver running on Windows node. For example, it simplifies the development and the deployment process. Computing is quite easier now, and also the image size is, is very, very much smaller than the normal uh, Windows image. So this diagram depicts how the, uh, the implementation between the host process container and uh, the process isolate container running on the Windows host. So the, the blue box represents the host process container, and the, and the green box represents the process isolate container. So from this diagram, you can see that the process, host process container uh, can run directly on the node, on the node, and uh, just, a, just as a regular process, which has all the original access on the host, and it can perform some storage operations like a mount disk or mount, mount volumes, while the process isolated container, uh, because it depends on its own internal Windows services and the libraries, so it cannot perform some uh, privileged operations. So, due to the same reason, so the, the image size of the process isolated container is much, much bigger than the host process container because it has its own Windows services and libraries inside of the image. Next, I will share you the, the, the details of the benefits. Uh, so, in the before, if you want to do some development and deployment, the workflow with the CSI proxy is a little complicated. Mainly, you have five steps when you want to add a new feature into the uh, CSI driver. For example, you need to add a new API in both CSI proxy server and the client. Step two, publish the new CSI proxy version in the upstream repo. Step three, adopt the CSI proxy version in the CSI driver. Step four, deploy the new CSI proxy version onto the all, the, all the Windows nodes. And lastly, you need to upgrade the CSI driver version all Windows nodes. So there are a few pain points. So in some, uh, in some, in certain Kubernetes clusters, in-place replacement is not supported, and that requires upgrading all Windows nodes just to get the CSI proxy version upgrade. Another pain point is that uh, a new CSI Java version must be compatible with all recent CSI proxy versions. So you need to do all kinds of tests different version uh, combination. And if you have already migrated to the host process CSI driver, you will know the benefits. So for the whole HPC host process uh, container, if you want to add a new feature, there's no new API required. You just need to add the new feature in the, into the CSI driver directly, and then publish the new CSI driver version, and then deploy the new version onto all Windows nodes. So there is no node upgrade required, and no version compatibility required because there is no CSI proxy anymore. Uh, the second benefit, the main benefit, is about the pinpoint in troubleshooting uh, with the CSI proxy. So in the before, if user has some problem, has some issue in the uh, CSI proxy, user needs to SSH to the Windows node and then ensure the CSI proxy service is healthy, and then get the logs. So here, example, so in the before, you can need to SH to the Windows nodes and run the first command get service to, to uh, make sure that the data proxy is in running stage, and then run the command catch command to get logs. So in some scenarios, customer may not have the direct access to the Windows node or Linux nodes. So that could be, uh, that could be more complicated in the troubleshooting. 
And uh, if you have already migrated to the host process container, you don't need to do that. You only need to get uh, use some command like kube control logs to get the data driver logs. So that's uh, that's quite simpler compared to the data proxy dependent deployment. Uh, so nicely about the status of the CSI proxy project. Due to the reason I mentioned earlier, so uh, the CSI proxy has, has been transformed before. It can run as a standalone process on the Windows node. And now it has been transformed to the uh, to a Go library, so which can be adopted by by other uh, Java using host process container. Now we are still working on this and it is now in alpha stage. And also, here are a few limitations of the host process container. For example, it requires uh, a Kubernetes 1.23 or later version. It requires container D 1.6 or later version. And also, a limited set of host user accounts are available uh, for the host process containers. For the CSR Java, we need the local domain for this account because we need uh, to perform some uh, storage operations using this account. And also, uh, some isolation like uh, file system isolation, IPv isolation on Windows are not supported for the host process containers. And also, host process con pods can only contain host process containers. So that's the limitation. Uh, next, I will share you how we do the do the migration to host process container deployment. Mainly, it involves three three changes, three kinds of changes: uh, interface change, deployment change, and the Windows image build for the host process container image. So first about the interface change. So we need to make some code changes in the CSI Java interfaces. The main thing involves six interfaces on the CSI Java node plugin. Uh, node, node stage volume, node stage volume is mainly for format volume, unmount, unmount volumes. Node published volume, unpublished volume is mainly for uh, bind mount volume, unmount volume. And node expand volume is for uh, expand volume, uh, expanding volume with a uh, bigger size. And lastly, the get volume status. Uh, it's for getting the volume status, like uh, the total volume size, the free space of the volume size. And uh, it's important to note that for the last get, no, get volume status, uh, there are some issues. So, uh, so it would be called on every volume mounted on the node. So if you have a lot of volumes uh, mounted on the node, on the Windows node, you will get lots of that get volume status call every minute for every volume. And uh, uh, default, so in the before, we are still using the partial command to get the volume status. And the uh, uh, partial command is expensive. Partial command call is expensive, as I will explain later. So we have done some optimization in this get volume status. So I will show you this later, in later slides. So about the interface changes, so we need to uh, just replace the uh, original CSI proxy calls with the direct calls inside of the Java container. So we take Azure disk, Azure file, uh, CSI Java as an example, so mainly it involves following functions. We need to replace the CSI proxy calls with the direct calls in the following functions. And the, uh, the step two, migration step two. So we need to do some host process container deployment migration. So uh, this part is relatively easier because you only need to uh, follow the guide about how to create a host process con uh, pod on the Windows node. So for the CSI driver, it's a demon set running on the Windows node. And in the security context dot Windows options, you need to set host process as true and run as username as, as the local admin, a local system account. Because we uh, because the CSI driver node the privileged the operations. Uh, operation to, to uh, operate on the on the Windows host. So that's the reason why we want to set the local admin service account. And migration step three, we need to build a uh, we need to build a new uh, Windows image for the for the host process container. And uh, uh, good news is that the host process container based image really is very very small. It's only a few KB. And compared to Nano Server, which is around the uh, maybe 100 or 200 meg megabytes, that's, that's much smaller. And also, the, uh, the, host, the host process container image uh, can, is always compatible, which means that a single host process container image can, uh, can run on any OS versions, for example, Windows Server 2019, 2022, or later version. 
about the image build here is an example about the doc file, how to build a host Windows host the first image. That's quite straightforward. You only need to reference the first image, copy the binary to the Windows image, and then set the environment path and set the user as container administrator. So that's quite uh, straightforward and simple. And the next I will show you the key learnings and the gotchas we encountered during the migration process. So for some uh, customers, they have already uh, migrated to the host process container. And we they found that uh, once, they mount, mount, once they have mounted a few volumes on the, a few disk volumes mounted on the Windows node, and they use the people control top command to check. And they found that there's uh, uh, Azure Disk CSI Java consumes a lot of CPU and memory. And uh, if there are lots of volumes mounted on node, uh, it can it can consume uh, it almost uh, lead to the uh, make the make the uh, the whole Windows node OOM. So we want to investigate this issue, and uh, we use a tool called the WPR Windows Performance Recorder to capture the CPU usage on the Windows nodes. So uh, first we use Crypt Control EXDC to uh, message to the to a healthy first process container, and then run the WPR command to start capturing the CPU usage. Let it run for 30 seconds, and then run stop, and a new file called the CPU.dtl file is generated. And then we copy out that DTL file, and we use a, a, a UI, a, a new tool called the Windows Performance Analyzer to analyze the CPU consumption. And uh, uh, from this screenshot, you can see that uh, there are around five, there are five PowerShell processes which consume the 60 percentage of the of the CPU. That's quite uh, yeah, that's quite a big uh, consumption. And we found that there are the process, which uh, the process ID is 15096. It consumes 44 percentage CPU. And then when we click on the details, we found that this process 15096 it's calling, it's calling uh, the command get item. So, and after our investigation, we found that the coverage is not get volume status. Uh, because for every volume mounted on node, it will call, the, call this part of command once every minute. So if you have lots of volumes mounted on node, so there, there will be frequency uh, call for this part of command. And uh, we, so we learned that the PowerShell command calls are expensive, so we need to minimize the usage as much as possible. And that could reduce the CPU and the memory usage of the get volume status on Windows nodes. So how do we do that? Uh, it's, it's, and actually it's quite easy. So we, we just need to add a, a expression cache. For example, we, we add a 10 minute expression cache in the get volume status. So for every volume call on the get volume status, the CSI Java will get the data from the cache first. And if cache is missing, we then call the PowerShell command get item. So that could uh, reduce the frequency to uh, to once every 10 minutes, which can uh, reduce the CPU memory usage a lot. And another another way, I think the ultimate way is that we need to replace PowerShell command calls with Golan API calls as more as possible. So for example, we have already replaced a few PowerShell commands in the before. Uh, for the get volume status, we use the get volume command to uh, to get the total volume size and uh, remaining size. And now we use the Golan API Windows dot get disk free space ex uh, Golan API to to uh, to get the the free space and total size of the volume. And uh, in the before, we used the uh, get I new item to create a, a symbolic link. And now we use always dot team link to to. Uh, to create a symbol link. That could also reduce the CPU and the memory usage. And next I will show you the migration progress of the cloud providers. I only list the three. So for the Azure Desk and the Fire CSI drivers, we have already migrated and uh, it's already today from Kubernetes 1.7 on Azure Kubernetes service. And uh, currently we are doing some, uh, actually we are in the second stage. We are doing some optimization, as I mentioned earlier, to, to improve the performance of the uh, host process container on Windows, and uh, if, if uh, and it's still in alpha stage for the for the AWS disk driver, and uh, it's still working progress for the for the GCP disk driver. 
uh, next is the conclusion. So uh, for, the, for the host process container deployment, it can simplify the, simplify the uh, deployment and deployment process and the troubleshooting is easier and also it has a quite smaller image size, uh, which can be uh, beneficial for, for image distribution and manager. And uh, next I will share some plans that we are, we are doing now or we are doing in the future. So uh, we, we, are, we will continue replacing more powerful command lines uh, with the Golan API in the CPU driver, which can reduce the CPU and the memory usage a lot. And another thing is that we will continue making CSI proxy as a Go library for the CSI driver using host process container. Currently, this is still in alpha stage, and we want to make it better and finally today uh, for the CSI proxy project. And that, as, also, as I also mentioned earlier, that uh, we have did some performance optimization uh, in the Azure CSI drivers. So we also need to update the, uh, the performance optimization changes to the, to the CSI proxy project. Uh, next is about the uh, the mini image build for the host process image build. So uh, so currently all the all the uh, CSI uh, CSI containers uh, container images are built in the upstream C, uh, repo called the CSI release two repo. So this repo is responsible for building all the images, including Linux images and the host process images. Uh, sorry, uh, including the uh, Linux images and the Windows images. Uh, but but it does not support the host process image today. So we want, we also want to uh, support the host image build in that upstream repo. So that requires some future work to do. And, uh, and lastly, we want to migrate more CSI Java on Windows to host process container deployment. And for example, for the SMB CSI Java, uh, yeah, we also need to migrate. So lastly, reference, I also provide you some example about how the Azure CSI Java using host process container for reference. Okay, that's for, oh. that's all for today's session. Uh, any questions? Uh, the question is, uh, what's, uh, how, do we, how do we develop the CSI Java Windows? So in the before, we are still using host, uh, CSI proxy. So uh, all the CSI Java on Windows need to rely on the CSI proxy. So it's, uh, one way, when, when, when the CSI Java windows uh, need to perform some operations like uh, storage operations, like uh, disk format, mount, mount volumes, they need to call the uh, CSI proxy calls. So uh, with the host process container, so we need to, we can, we can make the call directly on the, on the node, on the inside of the CSI Java. Yeah. 